Welcome to the unofficial Kame channel. Today's story is insane, so click the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos and let's get straight to the point. Trevor always considered his marriage to Elisa to be the greatest achievement of his life. They had known each other since high school, and their love seemed indestructible. Together, they faced challenges, shared dreams, and built a life that, in the eyes of others, seemed perfect. However, in the last few weeks, Trevor began to notice subtle changes in Elisa's behavior. Small details that would previously go unnoticed now weighed on his mind like a burden impossible to ignore. Elisa was more distant, spent more time on her cell phone, and often went out alone, saying she needed some time to herself. Trevor tried not to think the worst, but doubt began to eat away at his peace of mind. He had always trusted Elisa blindly, but now uncertainty tormented him. It was a Friday afternoon when Trevor finally decided that he could no longer ignore what he was feeling. He left work early and went home, determined to confront Elisa about his suspicions. When he got there, he found the house empty, as he had expected. Elisa had left again, without saying where she was going. Trevor sat on the couch, his head resting in his hands. His thoughts were spinning in a whirlwind of confusing emotions. He wanted to trust Elisa. He wanted to believe that it was all just a figment of his imagination. But at the same time, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. As he waited, Trevor began to think about how his life had gotten to this point. They had been married for over a decade. They had a wonderful daughter and a beautiful house, the result of their hard work. How could something so solid suddenly start to crumble like this? Time passed slowly until, finally, Elisa arrived home. Hi, love. You're home early today, she said, somewhat surprised to see him in the living room. Trevor looked up, trying to read something on her face. Yes, I decided to leave early, he replied, trying to keep his voice steady. We need to talk. Elisa hesitated for a moment before sitting down next to him. Sure, about what? Trevor took a deep breath, searching for the right words. I don't know exactly how to start this, but I've noticed that you've been different, more distant. You've been going out a lot and I don't know where. I mean, I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm worried. She looked away, her hands nervously clasping together. Trevor, I... I didn't know you were feeling this way. I've just been a little stressed lately, that's all. Maybe I need more space. Space. Trevor repeated, the word leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. Elisa, we've been together for so long. Can you talk to me? What's really going on? She fell silent and for a moment, Trevor thought she was finally going to confess whatever it was she was hiding. But then, Elisa shook her head and smiled, a smile that seemed more forced than sincere. It's nothing, Trevor. I'm just tired, that's all. Let's just leave it at that, okay? Trevor wanted to believe her. He wanted her words to be enough to erase the distrust he felt. But as he watched the way she avoided his gaze, he knew something wasn't right. In the following days, Trevor began to investigate discreetly. He knew it was wrong that he was violating Elisa's privacy, but anguish overcame him. He needed answers, and if they didn't come from Elisa, he would find them on his own. Trevor searched Elisa's cell phone while she slept, but he found nothing compromising. Everything seemed normal. The messages, the calls, everything was routine. Still, the feeling that he was being deceived wouldn't leave him. He decided then that he needed outside help. He spoke to a close friend, Richard, someone he trusted completely, and who knew Elisa as well as he did? Do you really think she could be cheating on you? Richard asked, the disbelief evident in his tone of voice. I don't know, Richard. Everything has been really weird lately. She's always been distant, and when I try to talk about it, she either changes the subject or gets defensive. I don't know what to do. Richard thought for a moment before answering. Look, Trevor, I understand that you're worried, but you need to be sure before you take any action. Try talking to her again maybe in a less direct way. See if you can find out something that explains her behavior. Trevor knew that Richard was right. He needed more evidence before he could draw any conclusions. But time was running out, and the idea that Elisa might be involved with someone else was eating away at his sanity. Days passed without Trevor being able to find out anything. Until on a sunny Saturday morning, while Elisa was taking a shower, an unexpected message appeared on the screen of her cell phone, which was on the kitchen table. It was from James, Elisa's cousin. A shiver ran down Trevor's spine as he read the message. I can't wait to see you later. I miss you. The familiarity of those words left Trevor confused. 
James had always been very close to Elisa, almost like a brother. They grew up together, and he never suspected anything between them. But now, everything seemed different. Trevor's mind began to work at full speed. He remembered all the times James had shown up at his house without warning, the hushed conversations he and Elisa seemed to share. Was it possible that something had been going on between them all this time? And if so, why had he never noticed? Trevor decided he needed to confront Elisa, but in a way that she couldn't deny. He didn't want just vague accusations. He wanted the truth, the raw, unvarnished truth. When Elisa came out of the bathroom, he was ready. Elisa, who is James to you? The question came out bluntly, without beating around the bush. Elisa froze, her eyes wide with shock. What do you mean by that? I saw his message. I saw what he wrote to you. Are you two seeing each other behind my back? How long has this been going on? Elisa's face went pale, and for a moment, Trevor thought she was going to faint. But then, she took a deep breath and began to speak, her voice wavering. Trevor, I... I don't know how to start. I never wanted you to know this. I never wanted you to get hurt like this. But, yes, James and I are together. We've been together for a long time. Trevor felt the ground crumble beneath his feet. How long? Elisa swallowed hard, tears beginning to well up in her eyes. Ten years. The revelation hit Trevor like a punch in the gut. Ten years. They had been together for as long as he had believed his marriage was intact, while he had thought he had a happy and secure life. Emotions mixed inside him. Anger, betrayal, sadness, confusion. Why? He finally managed to ask, his voice weak and broken. Why did you do this to me, Elisa? Why to Julio? She pulled away from him, her eyes fixed on the floor. I never wanted to hurt you, Trevor. Julio and I have always been very close, and when we started getting involved, it was something that happened naturally. At first, I thought it was just a phase, something that would pass. But the years went by, and I found myself caught between two worlds. I love you, Trevor, but what I have with Julio is different. It's incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. Trevor repeated, incredulous. You're saying you love two men at the same time? And you think that's normal? How could you do this to me? Ten years, Elisa. Ten damn years. She was crying now. Sobs tearing from her chest as her words came out in broken pieces. I don't know, Trevor. I really don't know. I feel horrible, but I couldn't stop. I tried over and over, but I always went back to him. Trevor was silent, trying to process what she was saying. The woman he'd spent half his life with was having an affair with his own cousin for a decade. The idea was so absurd, so surreal, that he felt like he was trapped in a nightmare he couldn't wake up from. I need to think, he finally said, standing up and walking to the door. I can't stay here right now. I can't look at you. Elisa tried to follow him, but he held up a hand, stopping her. No, don't follow me. I need some time alone. He left home, aimlessly just wanting to escape the suffocating reality that surrounded him. Trevor drove for hours, aimlessly, trying to find a way to deal with the unbearable pain that was consuming his heart. The image of Elisa and Julio together, the thought of all the moments they laughed and shared their lives while he was in the dark, destroyed him inside. Finally, he stopped the car in a secluded place, an open field that he used to visit when he needed peace. There, he got out and felt his knees in the grass, tears streaming down his face. Trevor felt lost, not knowing how to move on. Everything he knew, everything he believed in, had been destroyed in a matter of minutes. He spent the night there, trying to find a way to move on. The next morning, when the sun rose, Trevor felt a little calmer, but still far from finding a solution. He knew he needed to talk to Julio, he needed to understand how all of this happened and, perhaps, confront him for what he did. Trevor drove to James's house, his heart pounding in his chest. When James opened the door, the surprise on his face was evident. Trevor, what are you doing here so early? Trevor entered the house uninvited, his expression somber. We need to talk, James. James closed the door behind him, nervous. About what? About you and Elisa. I know everything. The color drained from James's face. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. Trevor crossed his arms, waiting. Trevor, I... I'm so sorry, James finally managed to say. I never wanted you to know this way. Ten years, Trevor murmured, unable to hide the bitterness in his voice. Ten years, James. How could you do this to me? We're family. 
James ran his hands over his face, clearly distraught. I know. I'm an idiot. I fell in love with Elisa, and I couldn't stop. I knew it was wrong, but I was also trapped. I couldn't let her go. Trapped? You were trapped in a relationship that destroyed my marriage, that destroyed my life. How do you think that makes me feel? I know Trevor, I know. I'm a bastard. I should have ended it before, but I couldn't. Why? Uh, I have no excuses. Trevor looked at his cousin, seeing in him a weak and remorseful man, but that didn't lessen the pain he felt. And now, what do you intend to do? Julius sighed, his shoulders slumped in defeat. I don't know. Maybe it's better if I walk away for good. I can't go on like this. Trevor took a deep breath, trying to control the anger and sadness that mixed in his chest. Do you think that simply walking away will solve everything? That it will erase the ten years of betrayal? I don't know if I can forgive you, Julius. What about Elisa? Will she just let you go? James lowered his head, shame written all over his face. I don't know, Trevor. I really don't know. Maybe it's for the best for everyone. But I know it doesn't fix anything. I just want you to know that despite everything, I care about you. And I hate what I did. Trevor was silent for a long moment, trying to find a way out of the chaos his life had become. He wanted to scream. He wanted to hit James. He wanted this all to be a nightmare he could wake up from. But reality was harsh and unforgiving. He was faced with a choice. Forgive or move on alone. I need time, Trevor finally said, his voice cold. I can't make any decisions right now. I need to think. I need to figure out how to deal with all of this. Just stay away from me for now. I can't look at you right now. James nodded, his eyes full of regret. I understand. And if you need me for any reason, I'm here. Trevor didn't answer. He just turned and left James's house, feeling more lost than ever. He knew he needed to go home, face Elisa, and make a decision about the future of his marriage. But the idea of looking at her, of talking to her, made him sick. When Trevor got home, the atmosphere was heavy. Elisa was sitting in the living room, waiting for him, her hands shaking in her lap. She looked so vulnerable, so different from a strong, confident woman he knew. But Trevor knew he couldn't let her fragile appearance distract him from what needed to be done. Did you talk to him? Elisa asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Trevor nodded, keeping his distance. Yes, I did. He's sorry, but that doesn't change what you did. Elisa closed her eyes, tears streaming down her face. I know Trevor. I know there's no excuse for what I did. I love you so much, but somehow I lost myself. I don't want to lose you. I don't know what I would do without you. Those words, which once would have warmed Trevor's heart, now felt hollow. Elisa, how can you say you love me after all this? How can you continue to live this lie for so long? She sobbed, her hands covering her face. I don't know, Trevor. I wanted to stop. I wanted to go back in time and do things differently. I never meant to hurt you. Please, give me a chance. We can get through this together. Trevor watched her, feeling a mixture of compassion and heartbreak. Part of him wanted to believe that they could get through this, that their love was strong enough to face anything. But another part knew that the scars of that betrayal will be too deep to heal easily. I need time, Elisa, he said, his voice firm but not cruel. I need to think about everything. I need to figure out what I want and what we can do from here. I can't just forget about all this and move on like nothing happened. She nodded, wiping away her tears. I understand. And I'll be here waiting for you no matter how long it takes. I won't give up on us. In the days that followed, Trevor drifted apart. He took a leave of absence from work and went to a small mountain cabin that he and Elisa used to frequent when they needed some time to themselves. There he spent his days reflecting on his life, his marriage, and the future he wanted. As he walked the mountain trails, Trevor found himself remembering the good times he had spent with Elisa. The laughter, the adventures, the dreams they shared. But always, like a shadow he couldn't escape, the image of Elisa and James together haunted him, making it impossible for him to find peace. However, during this time of solitude, Trevor also began to reflect on what he wanted for himself. He realized that he had been so focused on his pain and his anger that he hadn't stopped to think about what he really wanted out of life whether with or without Elisa. He knew he had two choices. Move on with Elisa and try to rebuild the trust that had been destroyed or end the marriage and start over. Both paths would be difficult, but he had to make a decision, no matter how painful it was. 
After a week at the cabin, Trevor felt ready to go home. He knew he had to face Elisa, had to decide if there was anything left to be saved in his marriage. When he got home, he found Elisa waiting for him in the living room, nervous and unsure. I've thought a lot, Trevor began, sitting down across from her. And I've come to a conclusion. Elisa held her breath, waiting for what he would say next. I don't know if I can forgive you completely, he continued, his voice full of sadness. What you and James did was a deep betrayal. But I also know that I still love you, despite everything. I don't want to throw away all the years we spent together, but that doesn't mean we can just go back to the way we were before. She started to cry again, but Trevor held up his hand to silence her. I need you to understand that this is going to take time. If we want to try to save our marriage, we're both going to have to work hard to rebuild the trust that was broken. It won't be easy, and we may ultimately decide that it's best to go our separate ways. But I'm willing to try if you are too. Elisa nodded vigorously, tears falling freely. I'm willing, Trevor. I'll do anything to get you back. I know I messed up, I know I betrayed your trust, but I'm going to do everything I can to fix it to prove that we can still be happy together. They spent the night talking, trying to understand where things went wrong and what they could do to rebuild their relationship. Trevor knew the road ahead would be long and difficult, but he decided that for now, he would give them a chance to try. Over time, Trevor and Elisa began attending couples therapy, trying to work through their issues and understand the motivations behind Elisa's actions. Trevor struggled to overcome the pain of the betrayal, while Elisa struggled to regain the trust that had been lost. The weeks turned into months, and slowly, Trevor began to see small changes. They began to communicate better, to share their feelings more, and to work together to heal the wounds of the past. But despite the progress, Trevor knew that the shadow of the betrayal would never completely disappear. A year later, Trevor felt that he was finally ready to make the decision that he had put off for so long. He loved Elisa, and there was still a part of him that desperately wanted to keep the family together. But he also knew that he would never be able to completely forget what had happened. The trust that had once been the foundation of their relationship was irreparably compromised. One silent night, as they sat on the couch, Trevor took Elisa's hand and looked into her eyes. Elisa, I love you, but I don't think we can go on like this. We can't live a life based on hurt and distrust. I think it's time for us to move on, each on our own path. Elisa was shocked, silent tears streaming down her face. You, you're breaking up with me? Trevor took a deep breath, fighting the emotions that threatened to overwhelm him. This isn't what I want, but it's what I think we need. We've been through so much, we've tried to save our marriage, but deep down I know we'll never go back to the way we were before. I think it'll be better for both of us if we move on. She sobbed, squeezing his hand. I don't want to lose you, Trevor. I know I messed up, but I can't imagine my life without you. Trevor felt his heart ache, but he knew he was making the right decision. I don't want to lose you either, but we can't keep living with this pain. We need to give ourselves a chance to find happiness, even if it means being apart. After a long hug and shared tears, Trevor and Elisa decided that divorce would be the best solution for both of them. It was a painful decision, but necessary so that they could move on and begin to heal the wounds left by the betrayal. In the end, Trevor knew that the love he and Elisa shared had not disappeared, but it transformed into something different. They would always be a part of each other's lives, but now each of them needed to follow their own path. Trevor decided to focus on his own life, his career, and finding happiness within himself. He knew that the future was still uncertain, but he was willing to face the challenges that lay ahead. And most of all, he knew that despite everything, he still had the capacity to love and be loved. Time passed, and although the scars of betrayal never completely disappeared, Trevor found peace in his new life. He learned to forgive not only Elisa and Julio, but himself as well. And by doing so, he was able to make room for a new beginning, where true love and genuine happiness could finally blossom. And that was our story for today. What did you think of all this? If you've come this far, click the like button so you don't miss any videos. Until next time, bye.